This is Duke University. Welcome to all of you. And in fact, to start things off, uh, I'd like to have uh, our Provost Peter Lang say some words. Um, I want to welcome all of you. Uh, I have a few remarks to make uh, on this anniversary day. Um, you know, provosts are not always beloved for the decisions that they make. Um, some of you may know that. Those of you who even know what provost is, may not be all of you. Uh, when 25 years ago, Philip Griffiths, then provost of Duke University, made the decision to create the Institute for Statistics and Decision Sciences, some thought it inspired, and many others not. After all, Duke had no such institutes. Units intended primarily for graduate students in research, interdisciplinary in their substance, with a limited undergraduate role. We had no deep expertise in statistics, and what was this Bayesian thing anyway? <laughs> in fact, many of Duke outside of the IASDS world thought that the ISDS creation was less inspired than conspired. A nefarious collaboration among uh, those that would draw resources away from other parts of the university for an unconventional, some then I think would even have said wacky and narrow approach to statistics, to teaching, and to the structure of the university. Well, here we are 25 years later, celebrating the boldness of that first decision and the development and evolution of ISDS into the Department of Statistical Sciences, now one of the premier departments of statistics in the country, and one of the premier departments is the uh, departments that do. The fact that, as the program statement reads, the department is nationally ranked in the top five research departments. Of course, we pay no attention to ranking unless we're in the top five. <laughs> <laughs> and as a top 10 graduate program, is really only one of the most public parts of this story. In the dawning, or perhaps mid-morning era of big data, which we are now in, DSS is the most worthy offspring of ISDS, and it is at the heart of Duke's commitment to building a powerful interdisciplinary capability in the computational sciences, which will not only continue to do the kinds of half-breaking work that ISDS has always been a home for and the DSS is a home for now, but will also enable disciplines across the campus, from the humanities to the social sciences to the natural and biomedical sciences, to translational research in medicine to bring the most sophisticated statistical thinking to disciplinary and interdisciplinary problems, and importantly, to some of the most important areas of global change, including challenge, excuse me, including energy, the environment, and global health. In doing so, ISDS and now DSS has become the germ of, well, ISDS became the germ of something which turned out not alien to do but instead emblematic of what our university has become. Duke is committed to being a university deeply committed to multidisciplinary work, to collaboration, to vertical integration, and to putting our knowledge at the service of society. DSS is very much committed to the same, and with its undergraduate major, it does so now not only through its research mission and its collaborative vision, <coughs> but through the education of so many undergraduates to prepare them for the numerically and digitally driven so today, when we celebrate the foundation of ISDS, we can truly see that that decision, in an era so different in so many relevant ways from the current one, was truly inspired. And we celebrate not only that original vision, but all the work and inspiration, including that of the current faculty and its current and past leaders, Mike West, Valine Stangle, and Alan Gelfand, that has made DSS the outstanding Duke Department of Houston. I welcome all of you here. I hope you have a great conference. I hope you have excellent libations, a word which I never expected to hear emerge from the lips of Alan Delphin. <laughs> <laughs> very much, uh, very much appreciate having Laurie Patton here at the Dean of Arts and Sciences. Thank you so much, Alan. I'm delighted to welcome all of you here for the 25th anniversary of the founding of the Department of Statistics. Many of you sitting here have clearly lived this reality of the department's beginning as the Institute of Statistics and Decision Sciences in 1987. 
And as you also know, because you helped build it, the department is now ranked, as we just heard again, and I'm sure we're going to be hearing it a lot, in the top five research departments and as a top ten graduate program. But I began to think, um, as I was thinking this week about how I might um, speak with you today, I also wanted to ask myself, well, what does it take to make a department? I think it takes three things. First, a sense of intellectual identity. Second, a sense of legacy. And third, a sense of work to do. Key questions in the field that are yet to be asked. So let's begin with intellectual identity. The growth and vitality of this department would be to come into its own as the world's leading Bayesian center. As a religionist, I love the Bayesian legacy for other reasons. But as I understand it, Bayesian statistics is holistic and inclusive. It is holistic because any statistical model is expressed in terms of degrees of belief or, more specifically, Bayesian probabilities. And it is inclusive in that statistical models for use in Bayesian statistics require the formulation of a set of prior distributions for any unknown parameters. So while I'm still learning about Bayesian modeling from all of you, I do think these qualities of holism and inclusiveness should be the elements of the best of intellectual work that should happen in any department in any 21st century university. So you're really a model for pretty much everybody else. Second, let's turn to a sense of legacy. A sense of legacy, perhaps, is another way of naming the educational tradition, and it's the stuff around which communities cohere. Once one has an admitting program at both the undergraduate and graduate levels, it's very, very hard to turn back because one is suddenly responsible for the next generation and committed to its form formation. That fact creates community like no other thing. And I saw that community in action in countless numbers of ways last year in my first year as dean. Renaming the Department of Statistical Science in 2007 also coincided with the establishment of a research-connected undergraduate major. And suddenly there were more than just the 18 fabulous faculty. There were also 20 research active undergraduate majors as well as 40 graduate <coughs> students, never mind the postdocs, visitors, and affiliated researchers. This fact created legacy almost instantly. And third, the idea of work left to do. And that work, if you look at the department's website, if you talk to anyone in your department, is exhilarating. Whether it's in the Duke UNC collaborations in research on probability, computational biology and statistical genetics, ecological forecasting, biodiversity and abundance, computer simulation and applied inverse problems, statistics and government and policy. And you can't sit with Chair Alan Gelfand or any number of other folks in your department for more than a minute without seeing the sense of enthusiasm and possibility in all of these areas, including the 2014 conference for women in statistics that our uh, arts and sciences is helping out with. And I know Duke is working on any number of other collaborations about which I am only barely aware. And all of it is interdisciplinary. Indeed, I think this department is a model of interdisciplinarity because statisticians learn about and work with other fields simply as a matter of course. It's the basic oxygen of their intellectual life. So congratulations to every one of you for creating this intellectual identity, for creating this legacy, and for your keen sense of the work left to do. I look forward to making it, making it happen with you. Thanks. And next, uh, after those wonderful words from Lori, Robert, Robert Calderbank, Dean of Natural Sciences. It's always terribly difficult to, um, to, to um, follow your betters from the, um, the humanities and the social sciences because they're so articulate. And, um, and my challenge here as dean for the, uh, the natural sciences is to figure out how to take greatest advantage of this enthusiasm that um, 
my dean has, and perhaps thanks to the Reverend Bayes, for the Department of Statistical Science. Um, I will say that I think that uh, statistics is especially good match to Duke, an especially good match to the, um, the, the interdisciplinary character of Duke, which is really its uh, signature. If I were to unfairly characterize physics, it would be that a physicist believes that you just write down the right equation, and then you think really hard, and you explain the rest of the world. Whereas statistics is a little bit different. Um, statistics starts from data, and statisticians let the data tell them things. And of course, the special thing about Bayesian statistics is that um, you try to be as uh, rigorous as you can about not letting prior beliefs interfere with what the data is trying to tell you. So anyway, I'm delighted that you've uh, gathered your community here for the next um, uh, day and a bit. And um, like Peter, I hope that you have a blast. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Um, so we, uh, we have a very, I think, very interesting uh, sort of uh, period of hi historic, historical reflection coming up. Uh, but I just wanted to offer a few words before we, we move into that. I've only been here for, for 10 years, um, but I would certainly say that this has been the most, most rewarding decade of my career. And in particular, I have just thoroughly appreciated sort of the passion and uh, spirit and energy that is Duke. and. I have really appreciated the interdisciplinary climate and the family atmosphere, the sense of family that characterizes this institution. And uh, again, I think all of us who spend time here uh, very, very quickly appreciate that. Um, as has been mentioned, our particular department is on an outstanding trajectory. I would even say uh, we're possibly better than 10 and 5. We might even be number 3 or higher in terms of research productivity. Um, and I think it's all due, again, to this harmonious environment that we create, this warm and nurturing uh, supportive environment. And I think uh, what it leads to is a flourishing graduate program, an ex exceptional amount of external funding, uh, a uh, very large uh, group of, of very distinguished visitors, uh, um, a very uh, pros prospering uh, undergraduate major, um, and so it, it all just seems to uh, to flow in a, in a sort of very organic way. And I'm I'm really I'm really delighted to to watch all of this. We have, as Laurie mentioned, upcoming uh, meeting in May of 2014 for. Uh, uh, the first one for uh, women in statistics. Uh, a year from December, we're going to have uh, an objective Bayes meeting here. Uh, also, a year from December, we're going to celebrate the uh, 250th uh, anniversary of the Reverend delivering the paper. And we have uh, um, um, Steve Feinberg, Adrian Smith, and uh, um, um, anyway, we have, a, we have a wonderful program set up uh, for that. So that will uh, be, again, an illustration of something to, to look forward to. Um, I just, before I pass this over to, to Mike, um, I had asked some people to, uh, to try to attend, and if they couldn't attend, at least to give us a, a few words. And so I just want to read a few words from three different people. First of all, from, from Keith Brody, who was president of the university from 1985 to 1993 and was chancellor prior to that. And uh, so Keith sends these words, and he writes, I join in congratulating Duke University's Department of Statistical Science on the occasion of its 25th anniversary. We're so proud of the great success achieved by the department over these years and know you and your faculty have brought honor and respect to Duke through your very many significant accomplishments. Please accept my apologies and being unable to attend the festivities and know that we are so proud of the success you've become with appreciation, Keith Brody. 
Um, next, I tried very hard to um, get Phil, Philip Griffiths to come here, and uh, um, we lost out to the 40th birthday of his daughter. Uh, they're having a party tonight, and he was just unable to come down. Uh, from Princeton, but uh, Philip was the uh, provost uh, at the time of the, uh, the founding of the department, and he offers some uh, recollections, which I just again like to read a little bit. Um, I would like to congratulate Alan and his colleagues on the 25th anniversary of Duke's department and on the outstanding success they've achieved in teaching in statistics teaching and research across the campus. I'm sorry I can't be with you uh, to celebrate this milestone, but I'd like to recount a little bit of history. Anyone familiar uh, with this will recognize my recollections are only approximate. When I arrived at Duke as provost in 1983, there was no centralized approach to statistics teaching, little research that drew from multiple perspectives, and almost no real capacity for consulting, despite widespread demand on campus for generating and interpreting data and for the use of statistical modeling. A distinguished faculty member in the math department was mainly responsible for teaching statistics for the arts and sciences and for engineering with visiting faculty brought in as needed to supplement the curriculum. The business and medical schools offered their own stats courses, faculty members requiring statistical consulting services in connection with the research in business, medicine, health policy, engineering, environment, had to look frequently outside of Duke. Okay, so he then goes on to, to give a, uh, you know, a little more detail, and it's two pages, and I don't really want to uh, risk people falling asleep, so, uh, uh, but he d does note that soon after his arrival, we established a faculty committee to discuss the issue of, of creation of a, of a program. We brought in a number of consultants, including Jay Cadane from Carnegie Mellon. CMU was arguably the leading center for the use of Bayesian statistics in a variety of areas at that time including social sciences. The way the statistics enterprise at Carnegie Mellon was set up in function provides something of a model for what we might do at Duke. Um, as a result of these deliberations, with the support of then President Terry Sanford and especially Keith Brody, we established the Institute of Statistics and Decision Sciences. This was one of the first, if not the first, campus-wide activities to be set up at Duke. It made good sense academically and in some ways a model for future cross-campus activities could also take advantage of the physical proximity of the professional schools to arts and sciences. Um, when I left, um, uh, when I left Duke, uh, ISDS was established and already functioning at quite a high level in the process of realizing initial objectives, and it's been tremendously satisfying for me to see how well established the stats enterprise has become at Duke and the high level at which it is performing. I commend you for the work you've done to make the Department of Statistical Science the outstanding program it is today, and I wish you a wonderful celebration and many, many more years of success. And the last one is from Roy Weintraub. Roy Weintraub was actually the chair of economics and at the time in 1987 became the acting director of ISDS in 1987. And I think Mike is gonna say some more words about that and probably tell me that I'm wrong, uh, but that's usual. Uh, when I interact with Mike. <laughs> um, but anyway, just a few of his words in one particular story. Again, he has almost three pages, and I'm not going to try to read all of it, but I was appreciative to receive it. Um, as many of you know, the planning for statistics presence at Duke was a many-splendored thing. As chair of economics in the mid-'80s, my interests were to build on our emerging strength in econometrics, to get the economics department out of the business of teaching required courses in statistics for social science students, including economic students, and to more generally gather increased resources for the department to grow and prosper. Um, Provost Griffith, lobbied by Fuqua's decision science people, was convinced that we should have a statistics presence at Duke University, but we never would have the resources to compete with North Carolina State or UNC as a traditional department. He was also big on interdisciplinarity. My memory is a bit vague on details, but he created a committee to make a case for statistics at Duke, and the various interests from the committee to make the case, uh, the FUCA people, the economics people, the math people, all need to be coordinated. As a past chair of the Academic Council, I knew most of the Duke faculty, so Griffiths thought I would be a good choice to chair that herd of cats, especially since in some economics thought uh, that more 
for statistics meant less for economics. I'm pretty sure Don Burdick and Robert Winkler and David Eddy were on the committee, as was Robert Wolpert. Okay, it quickly emerged that Duke's Bayesian presence should be at the heart of any proposal, but most of my economics colleagues were not pleased by this, as they wanted our students to be taught more traditional statistics, so they were not happy to do so themselves. And so the proposal had to be a compromise couched in brave prose. Anyway, um, it goes on um, uh, to say that we got the proposal past relevant committees, and I maneuvered it through the Academic Council, and Griffith and I took it to the trustees. It was good to have the provost on our side. Since this happened late in the academic year, around May of 1986, there was no time to search for a chair. So Griffith asked me to do it for a price, I agreed. And in 1986-87, I chaired both ISDS and economics. That year was a roller coaster as I recruited for two departments on the make and wheeled and dealed in a maniac fashion. And he has one story just to conclude. I recall, for instance, meeting Jim Berger at Robert Wolpert's house and drinking single malts to keep them company. I think I crawled home. Um, I hired a distinguished Bayesian and then in my usual offer later apparently offended him by noting that he would teach a traditional statistics course to economic students. I recall my ISDS colleagues were insistent, they yelled at me, um, that my apology needed to be an abject one. We did search for a chair because my ability to evaluate statistics talent was minimal and had little luck. Just when I was fearing that I would have to be doing the job for another year, my tearful secretary told me that John Gavicki was sending out an offer, offer letter on ISDS stationery that said, John Gavicki, chair of ISDS. I was very pleased, of course, but the decision expressed so much anger at the provost for never telling me that he had made the decision that he gave me an extra sabbatical. It's good to be able to feign anger. Anyway, he concludes that I'm pleased to have been part of ISDS and Statistics Department Early History and to have seen the experiments succeed so magnificently well. Sorry not to be able to join you today, but I do feel connected to all of you. Anyway, so again, these words are just, just wonderful to hear and they sort of, uh, I think, complement the, uh, as I said, the ambience we're creating for this hour. And so at this point, I'd like to pass this on to uh, Mike and to Bob and Robert to uh, um, to sort of again provide, I think, a, a review of, uh, of, of the early years of the department. Thanks. Bob and Mike and I have a tag team presentation of history. I'm the prehistory. I, I came to Duke in the late 70s, uh, and Don Burdick was the lone statistician. Statistics had to be taught, so people like me were roped into doing it. I knew lots of probability theory and stochastic processes, and it was kind of exciting to learn about a t-test and <laughs> p-values the night before I taught it to undergraduates. Uh, the provost at that time, Phil Griffith, was uh, visionary and strong-willed. Seems to be a tradition at Duke. Uh, the, he was a National Academy of Sciences mathematician who uh, had a lot of confidence about his decisions in mathematical sciences and recognized that Duke needed statistical science presence more than it had uh, and was able to persuade the, the uh, a variety of faculty on Duke's campus and to learn from others out in the, the, um, the he consulted with others off campus about how to go about building a statistics department. He talked to, to uh, Percy Diaconis and Jay Cadane and Bruce Hill at Duke, David Lane and David Eddy, this head of the Center for Health Policy Research, were influential. And all of these people told him about how Bayesian statistics was a more principled way of doing inference. But the, the real key advantage for Bayesian statistics and for the, the reason that, that that was the focus, chosen as the focus for statistics here, is the, that it was, there was a niche. He didn't have the resources to build a department of 20 or 30 people. He could only pull together half a dozen or so. But at that time, Bayesian statisticians were isolated, scattered all over the world. What he could offer them wasn't huge salaries or, or a, 
glory right away. He could offer them the chance to work with each other and to build a center that could become rather quickly seen as a center of excellence in, in statistical science, particularly Bayesian statistics all over the world. Oh, Roy, uh, I've had my story stolen from me a little bit here. Roy Weintraub was the, the uh, initial, the founding director uh, for reasons that you've just heard. And the funniest thing that happened in his year was inviting Dennis Lindley to, be the, to come to Duke for a, a, a sabbatical leave, uh, and then assigning him a Statistics 101 course. Uh, Dennis was just shocked. He, he had expected to have no teaching obligation at all, or if any, perhaps a small graduate course where he could talk to uh, advanced students about his work and reminisce. And instead, he was having to prepare nightly for, to teach a class of 100 kids about t-tests. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, so at first, he was, he was irate, and, and that apology of Roy was really needed. But he confided in me after a few weeks that, that he really liked the Duke undergraduate student. <laughs> so he was uh, uh, won over by, by kids asking smart questions and getting excited by whatever it was he was talking to them about. So, so from the earliest days, we've had a way of combining research and teaching in ways that, that help both. Uh, the end of my early prehistory then is, is when uh, Roy handed off the baton to John Gaywecki, and who, along with Jean-Francois Richard, came over from economics to, to statistics. And in the background, Jim Berger helped uh, Phil Griffith pick people to hire, and uh, with picking the, the first half dozen or so uh, faculty members in ISDS, many of whom are in this room and all of whom are known to us. So I'd like to thank you very much for your attention and hand off the uh, baton to Bob Winkler. Thanks, Robert. You folks are very lucky this morning because it turns out that in one of my fits of cleaning out my office, I threw out all my files from the old days. And so I don't have all those details to relate to you. Uh, however, Mike evidently did not throw out his files, so you've got something to look forward to. <laughs> I just want to give a few personal remembrances from the early days. Uh, my first contact with Duke came in the late 70s when the Fuqua School approached me about moving to Duke. And so I, I knew nothing about Duke. I came down here, I took a look, looked kind of interesting, and Fuqua was clearly a place on the move. <clears throat> the dean, Tom Keller, looked like somebody who was going to really build a good place. But after thinking about it, I decided to stay where I was at Indiana. And I took a sabbatical. I think my, my sabbatical had a role in that decision. But they kept in touch. And in the early 80s, we resumed talking. And at that time, things had changed. Fuqua had gotten the gift from J.B. Fuqua and actually become Fuqua. It was just the school of business before that. And uh, Phil, Philip Griffiths was around. And as Robert said, Philip was interested in creating a department like this, and he was talking to the right people, like Jim Berger and Jay Cadane. And as someone who went to graduate school in the 60s, when Bayesian was a nasty word to use in statistics conferences, I was really excited about that. And so that kind of pushed me over the edge, made me come to Duke. <clears throat> And actually, the fact that it took me a long time to come to Duke was probably good practice because we worked on Jim Berger for much longer than Fuqua worked on me. And I can remember going to conferences and go, taking long walks with Jim. And at the end of it, each walk, I thought, you know, I think he's going to come to Duke now. And then, sure enough, we couldn't pull him out of Purdue. But finally, he made the right decision and came here. And of course, it was great for us. I, I think all three of us, Robert and Mike and I, remembered most of all the Dennis Lindley story. And I, can, I recall particularly that 
Dennis and I were talking on the phone. We had been communicating about some ideas, and he expressed an interest in coming to visit here. And I was very excited, so I ran to Roy Weintraub and said, Dennis Lindley wants to come and visit. This would be great for the group. To which Roy replied, who the hell is Dennis Lindley? <laughs> well, that set me back a little bit, and then, of course, as Robert said, Roy decided he, th he viewed Dennis as more or less an adjunct visitor, uh, so he could assign him low-level teaching if he wanted to, and fortunately, Dennis was a good sport about all this, and it all worked out fine, but uh, that was a little disconcerting. I think a really major step that convinced me that we were going places was when we hired Mike West. And Mike has really been a rock for the group over the years, leading in many ways. Uh, but he was, you could see that in him when, when we hired him. And uh, it made a big difference in terms of expectations for the future. It showed that we were able to hire somebody of that quality. So in closing, I guess I'll say, I said just a few brief remembrances, and then I'll turn it over to Mike. I had high hopes when arriving at Duke, both for Fuqua and for then ISDS. And those hopes have been more than realized in both cases. Fuqua has thrived and grown, and the faculty is much more research-oriented faculty than it used to be, and doing very well. And ISDS slash DSS has been successful beyond my wildest dreams. And this is largely because of great leadership. And we did a good job, we, I say. I really wasn't involved in it. The people who took over the department did a great job of hiring both senior stars and really bright young scholars, developing a PhD program. Um, there are lots of colleagues here that I've enjoyed interacting with, and if you look at the list of colleagues, it reads like a who's who in Bayesian statistics. Um, but in closing, I guess, again, uh, I'd like to make a special shout out to Mike West. Of all the people who have done a lot for the development of ISDS slash DSS, I don't think anybody deserves more credit than Mike. So the history of the department. Uh, some of you may not know that we had a logo. This is the original logo for the department. It lasted about 10 years. Uh, this magnificent work of art created by two of our alums, one of whom is here, lasted about 12 years. And then we morphed into the department, and this is our T-shirt logo nowadays. This is the history of, a part of the history of the evolution of the discipline. It's nice that we've had these, uh, these, these, these touchstones um, from Bob and Robert in particular, um, and some of the letters that, that Alan read from about what happened. And I'm just gonna go through a couple of slides with a timeline. You had lots of data. This is really the same data. It'll clean up some of the noise. In fact, the nucleating um, committee report that really started the ball rolling hasn't been mentioned yet. It was an ad hoc report that just came out of the faculty. And if Don Burdick will stand up, for those of you who don't know, that don't know Don, so Don was in, uh, a statistician in the mathematics department. <laughs> David Eddy and David Lane and, and, uh, and one or two others, they got together over a beer and wrote a, a letter, a report, to then acting provost Keith Brody who became chancellor and then he became president, um, saying, hey, you know, we need a statistics center. It's time. Duke is on the up and up, uh, and we're going places, and you're not going to do it without better statistics teaching, statistics research, look across campus. It's in every discipline. Uh, they weren't using the term interdisciplinarity in those days. It wasn't yet really part of the academic lingua franca. But it was the nucleating event in establishing the, the institute. Uh, Keith was busy. He was about to become the chancellor of the medical school. And he asked uh, his incoming provost, Phil Griffiths, 
topologist. Keith is a psychiatrist. Phil Griffiths is a topologist, an algebraic uh, topologist. Uh, to look at this, and so, so Phil put together this formal committee chaired by then chair of economics, Roy Weintraub. For those of you that don't know Roy, he does game theory, history of economics, a little bit of econometrics. And they brought in a lot of consultants. A few have been named. Jim Berger was among them, lots and lots of them. I'm sorry, I've misspelled your name, Bob. But I highlighted it because Bob was always in the mix. Uh, he may not have been the chair of any of these committees, but it wouldn't have happened without Bob. And they were looking for ideas from other departments, as departments do. You know, since the early 90s, our department has been used as a consulting base for other departments in the way that Duke was doing then. And that all came together with the notion that there should be an institute. Why not a department? The provost told us right at the start. Not everybody at Duke thought it was a good idea for resource issues and, and intellectual issues, just honest, open disagreements. So Roy was the acting director, 1986-87. We just heard he was really bullied into it, but he's an economist. Uh, I, I'm sure he, he was satisfied with the circumstances. That's 26 years ago. It officially began the following year. And these are three people who, potent administrators at the time, um, responded to this groundswell of interest coming from the faculty and did something about it. And it reminds me of the, the joke, what, it, what happens when you get a psychiatrist, a topologist, an economist in a bar together? You get a top statistics department. <laughs> so it officially began then the following year, uh, John Gewecki in economics agreed to be the, 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 the full-time founding director. Roy was the, the founding acting director. And the faculty with, that were here then, I've, again, I've highlighted uh, Dennis Lindley in red, he was a visiting. Dennis had been retired for 10 years, and he was wandering around the world, uh, meeting people and talking about statistics. He hadn't done teaching for years. Uh, and uh, you've heard the story, and I can, tell, I can put some spin on it later for those of you that are interested, uh, but Robert's right. He actually got kicks out of teaching undergraduates for the first time, probably in 15 or 20 years. Um, Don Burdick and Robert moved in. Mike Levine was the first external hire officially as an assistant professor. And then the ball started rolling. And the following year, Jim and I came as visitors. We came to visit for one year um, to look around, to you know, see what was happening here. I was struck by the, um, the climate in particular, having spent time in the Northeast at various universities. Um, but it was the statistics around campus, the opportunity for collaborative statistics in big science, big social science, what, you name it, and the fact that there was nothing to get in the way, modulo what the provost had to say about faculty and department uh, support at various levels, nothing to get in the way in terms of the department really was only just beginning. It was almost a white sheet. So we visited for a year. Um, Jim had to go back to the Northern Wastelands for a couple of years before he decided he could move here full time. And I'm still visiting. <laughs> we did some things in that year. We started teaching, we started growing collaborations, we started consulting, campus outreach, and we got the PhD proposal approved. Probably the fastest in, in, in the history of Duke. And the following year we started admitting students. Our first class of students, uh, five students, a um, couple of other things happened in 1990. Uh, I took over as director. Um, and the first thing I did was, the first thing that happened administratively that we moved the institute into arts and sciences. And from that point on, in all respects except the name and the fact that we had no undergraduate major. And for the Duke trustees, those two things go together. The latter is required for the former. But in all other respects, we were in, from that point on, we were a Department of Arts and Sciences. Other things were happening at the same time that ISDS was involved in and spearheading, in fact, uh, working with Triangle um, Universities, working with RTF, working with RTI. John Gaywecki had been involved in this. Very, very important. I learned a lot from him about business plans. He was, he's an economist. That was the year that we also started NIST. 
And I know for many of the, the alums, many of you here and many of the alums that aren't here, NIST was really important as part of your uh, life and times as a student here. And of course, it's now the premier, the world's premier nonprofit uh, research institute. Very important to the department, very important to the university uh, in, in many ways uh, nowadays. So then we started really pushing the rock uphill. Um, just a few of us, uh, lots of political issues, resource issues on, you know, uh, in dealing with uh, the growth of a, a new department. Um, other things started happening. <laughs> we'll hear more about this later, I'm sure, and we'll see more about this. But as we grew the PhD program, we started building this community, this professional, socio-professional community that has been alluded to already, that has been so important, certainly to me and I think to most of us. And I think we'll see this in some of the comments from the alums in their talks this week. Getting together in an intellectual community driven by the commitment to Bayesian thinking and its interdisciplinary applications. And getting to know people in a socio-professional context as part of that. There are a few milestones over the years in, in the lives of departments that universities uh, um, recognize and, and, and uh, have an impact on how universities understand how their departments are doing and how they're regarded in, in the rest of the world. And they involve external reviews. So a team comes in and spend a few days and talk to the students, talk to the faculty, talk to other departments, write a report. Fifteen university committees then write reports and sometimes nothing happens. I went back, I've got all the files, uh, back to 1983. I went back and looked at a few of these milestones and just pulled some of the, com just a, a couple of comments. Of course, I could have pulled some negative comments, but I, they're public documents. The, the most important thing in the first review was the effort and the initiative on behalf of the university to create a department almost by accident with a solid Bayesian focus. Was, 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 was a, it, was, it was the centerpiece of the review. This is a really good idea. It's working well. The institute's five years old, and boy, it's already an international reputation. And the students are good. Pushing the rock uphill a few more years. Lots of things happened. Expanding the faculty, expanding the PhD program, building master's programs, lots of interdisciplinary outreach, working with NIS uh, in the national uh, statistical communities. The next review was really the point at which uh, the university understood from the external commentaries that we are, uh, uh, we were already the leading Bayesian department, uh, but we were central to what was being understood to be a revolution in statistics, computational science-based statistics. Then I retired, uh, Delin took over in 2002 uh, lots of other things were happening at the time, including this, you know, this little side game that the department has been involved in with this, and we've been trying for a number of years to get the NSF to bring in the other side of NIST that had been missing, the National Science Foundation funded side of, of the National Institute, and Jim Berger, of course, was the founding director, and it's a massive success, but it grew out of that whole uh, development of NIST that was very heavily coupled into the development of our department. And now we're sort of in, uh, I regard that as sort of uh, um, 12, 13 year old, um, um, what's that, fifth, sixth grade, something of that nature, as a department. Uh, more, more pushing the rock uphill, but now the hill, you know, the gradient is, is less steep. We're a, a reasonably uh, early mature department uh, more expansion, more activity at the graduate level in particular, becoming identified as a leading graduate program uh, nationally in, 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 in formal forums. And then in 2007, as been noted, we, for the, first, the third time just before that, we, we talked about, well, is it time for a major? We'd done it twice before. And each time before, we'd said, no, we're too small, we're too busy. We want to, you know, we're involved with the PhD program, all of this interdisciplinary stuff. And if we open a major, we'll have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of majors. Okay, and the university is not going to give us 30 more faculty up front to, to deal with that. This time we looked at it differently. This time we all sort of realized that, hey, what do we enjoy doing? 
We love research. That's why we're lifelong students. Well, let's have a major which is about that. Let's just tell the, the students that if they want to major in statistical science, they've got to do research. So the cornerstone of the major is the year-long project that each student has to do one-on-one -on -one with a faculty member, uh, which I regard as the only sensible way to, to get undergraduate students really engaged in, in statistics. Get them involved in what we think, not in the history of statistics. They can figure that out if they want to later on. Uh, so with the major, uh, we also changed the name of the department, mainly for the students, but also because the trustees uh, will use the name department on a center or institute that does everything else if it has a major too. I think it was an important decision. Um, I know a lot of alums still think ISDS. Um, and Alan came in as chair. Um, gosh, it's six years now. Good grief. Uh, and it was a wonderful time. A wonderful time. A couple more years later, um, you know, there was during 2008, 2009, 2010, a number of uh, formal and informal uh, rankings, reputational rankings of various kinds, as well as formal rankings, uh, faculty and, and, and graduate education, uh, began to make, uh, uh, make the headlines. We had another external review, and I, I, this was the point at which I realized, you know, I, I came here sort of naively as a visitor for one year, um, you know, from a, a leading department, a very small but leading Bayesian department in England, Warwick, and you know, all I wanted to do was have good students to work with. And of course, starting a department, starting a PhD program, it takes a few years before they start to flow. Um, and I, you know, I was very naive. I thought five years will be rolling. It was at that point that I, re I started using this phrase. It takes one year to start a, a PhD program and then bring in the, 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 the uh, masters and, and undergrad activities. It takes 20 years to get to the top. And that external review really um, I uh, didn't, say, didn't say it that way, but it, it's nice to read, and it's a public document. I did take one quote out of that external review, and this has been alluded to by, um, by Alan. So the external review committees meet the faculty, meet departments, meet administrators, and spend some time on campus, and they spend hours with the students. And when they talk in their, in their written report about the students, this, this stands out. The upbeat spirit, students are engaged. They really are part of the intellectual community. Uh, and they love the department. And why do they love the department? Because it's a nurturing, supportive, socio-professional community for everybody, students, faculty, staff alike. And as I look ahead over the next few years, I'm thinking about our 30th, 35th, 50th anniversary celebrations, I hope to see that continue, because that for me has been really the, the, whole, the whole point about this department. 